flow control, and pre-infusion. They get a lot of attention these days. Do they deserve it? Is this something you need? Is it something you want? Is it a mere marketing gimmick, or is our coffee not all that it could be without it? I'm about to install and test an E61 flow control kit on my machine here. While this happens to be a Profitex setup, this adjustable valve fitted to the mushroom is a type of mod that suits all E61s. There are minor differences in design, so do check with your manufacturer before choosing a kit, but what you're about to see is basically the way it works for any E61 group. People claim that you can compensate for a lot of issues with an adjustable flow rate. Slow things down enough, some say, and light roast espresso will no longer strip away the inner lining of your esophagus. Well, where's the fun in that? In any case, we've got a lot of tinkering, tweaking, and testing ahead of us, so settle in and let's get to the truth about what flow control brings to the party. Oh. My. God. It's like a miracle. Here are the contents of my kit. A pressure gauge for reading off one of the brew water channels, much closer to the coffee. This is quite useful, even without the rest of the kit, as I'll show you. There's a replacement mushroom fitted with a user-operable valve. That's a nice chunk of heavy stainless there. Mushroom designs vary a bit across E61 groups. This one takes the brewing water up through these openings and down through a passage near the top that, in this case, is now adjustable. We have a stiffer replacement spring for the valve on the pre-infusion chamber. What? You didn't know that all E61 groups do automatic pre-infusion? Why does no one talk about this? Anyway, the only tools you'll need are an adjustable wrench, a 5mm hex and a 4mm hex maybe, and a rag. If your wrench has sharp edges, round them with a file as I've done here. The group is chrome-plated brass. Brass is soft. It's easy to leave marks. Position a rag on the jaws thus, for a bit more insurance. Start by setting the brew lever in the middle position so that you're not compressing the valve springs above or below the cam. There is a valve with a spring under this cap, so press down as you turn so that it doesn't get away from you when it comes off. I'll remove the plug with a 5mm hex wrench. Now I'll remove the pre-infusion chamber. Same deal with the rag. This also is spring-loaded, so take care as you unscrew it. The brew valve here is located above the cam, which lifts it and in so doing opens the brewing water path, connecting it to the water outside the mushroom and the boiler and the thermosiphon tubes, all of which are pressurized by the pump. It is possible to use the brew lever to open this valve without engaging the pump, which we'll look at a bit later. Below the cam, we have the automatic pre-infusion chamber and its valve. This allows for a slow ramp up of pressure when you start a shot. As soon as the water reaches about two or two and a half bar, it overcomes this spring and pushes the valve open. The pre-infusion chamber then fills with water, which delays the overall increase in water pressure until it fills completely. That takes maybe two seconds and explains why the E61 starts slowly. We'll watch that on the gauge in a moment. We're asserting manual control over the pre-infusion and pressure ramp up, so this replacement spring is stiff enough to keep the pre-infusion valve shut against water pressure. Once you install it, the valve no longer opens automatically and can only be opened with the brew lever in the bottom position, at which point the cam will force this valve and the exhaust valve below it open and depressurize everything below the mushroom. Be very careful not to over-tighten this gauge. Replacing the pre-infusion chamber will be difficult 
There's a lot more spring pressure now, so use both hands and be patient. Make sure that you're engaging the threads properly. You'll want to make sure the valve closes before the cap here bottoms out. That's easy enough to adjust. Loosen and raise it. Turn the valve until it closes, then lower the cap so that there's a little clearance beneath and tighten the knob. This is splined so you can reorient the handle. Three o'clock in the closed position works for me. Now we've got full manual control, so let's make some coffee. First up, stock mushroom and stock spring. Here you can see the brief pause at around two bar while the pre-infusion chamber is filling. Then it ramps up quickly and holds it nine or 10 bar, a bit higher than I would choose, but I'm using the factory settings here. So this is your basic E61 flow profile. Now, I want to do some imitation flow control by cycling the pump manually with the brewing valve open. So long as you maintain positive pressure on the coffee, this will do no harm. Okay, I see the pre-infusion finish, and now I try to slow it, stretch it out, and finally allow a ramp up to normal flow. I'm dragging this out longer than I would normally to illustrate. You can see the action on the gauge. It's kind of jittery, and I'm having a hard time finding a rhythm. But it's not doing the coffee any harm because the forces are distributed. The coffee itself is a buffer. It's actually not jittery down there where it counts. Let's watch that from below. I hope everyone is in the habit of using a naked portafilter with a mirror for testing new equipment or new techniques and for troubleshooting. The ones with spouts do hide a multitude of sins. I'll leave the sound on so you know when the pump is running. As you can see, just like the first example, this feels awkward, but the pump cycling back and forth doesn't cause any trouble. There are no flaws in the shot, no uninvolved areas, no channeling, and it actually tasted fine. You can't get tricky with this. It's not precise, but you can get a slow, prolonged extraction of 45 to 60 seconds or more, which is welcome on lighter roasts. It works fine so long as you maintain positive pressure. And greater precision won't yield a huge advantage here because, as I said, the coffee buffers the action. So if you like, you could start off by buying just a pressure gauge for, I don't know, 20 or 30 bucks and do a respectable job of regulating your flow by cycling the pump. I think with some practice, it could work pretty well. Now let's try it with the kit installed, which means automatic pre-infusion is disabled. I'm aiming for a slow start just like before. And here again, it's hard to get a feel for it. The action is a bit rough, and the control radius here is too short. I'm making very small movements, but I'm overshooting and undershooting like when I cycled the pump. The main difference here is that I can control the flow while the pump is running, rather than having it either full on or full off. As you can see, even with the factory setting on the pump, which is like 10 bar, I can keep my shots to an 8 bar maximum, which I prefer and I don't have to fiddle with the expansion valve. I can just watch the gauge and make the correction. Let's watch one from below. And again, a technically flawless shot. No uninvolved areas, no channeling. I'm sure that with some practice, I can time this a little better. Now I want to try a hybrid setup. I'll restore the stock spring on the pre-infusion valve. Remember, now I can control the rate of flow while the pump is running, so I can let the chamber fill slowly. It could take 5 seconds, 10 seconds, whatever I like. The low pressure limit is built in, so I'm not over and under shooting. I get a nice, predictable start, and I drag it out for a while. Now, this is the behavior I'm looking for. A leisurely pre-infusion followed by a smooth ramp-up. 
On the other hand, I could start with the valve open to shorten the pre-infusion stage to a normal couple of seconds and then adjust the flow as desired. This arrangement feels more easily repeatable than either of the previous two. I'm going to keep my machine set up like this with the stock pre-infusion spring because that lets me pre-infuse quickly or slowly in a predictable way and it lets me cap my final pressure conveniently. If you have a kit like this and you're a little disappointed, try it with the stock spring and see if you like it better. It only takes a few seconds to swap back and forth. You can call me a fan of the process in general. I prefer a longer, slower extraction than is typical for pretty much all the methods. I apply it to everything that I drink, pour over, mocha pot, espresso. I think that pre-wetting, pre-infusing, and starting slowly like that, extending the extraction, highlights more of the bitter sweetness and some other compounds that are hard to describe but add a little more depth of flavor or more complexity. So in general, this is what I like. And this device makes it a little bit easier. So what do I dislike about this? This handle is definitely too short. You get big changes from tiny movements. This gets hot. It's not fun to use. This portion of an E61 is not where you want your hands hanging around. If you've used hot water and steam recently, then those valve assemblies will be hot too. Of course, this is a small machine. Yours might not be so close together. Because it's made of different materials with different coefficients of expansion, the action becomes stickier as the temperature rises. It's easy to understand why a lot of systems use paddles, even when they're merely operating a switch. This has a rough, dead stick feel. I'd like a smoother action. So far, we've looked at modding an E61, an old design that kind of gets in the way. There are other approaches. Slayer uses a precision needle valve upstream of the group that you set and forget. That gives you two modes, restricted flow and full on. You can adjust both flow rates and you can decide when to switch from the first mode to the second. You get a two-stage pull that's very repeatable, but it's less flexible. You can't improvise during a shot. The Lamarzaco GS3MP shunts hot water into the drip tray in proportions that the user can govern in real time by operating a paddle. A bit wasteful in my opinion since you're heating water and then discarding it but it's a lot more comfortable than the modded E61. Although not tremendously smoother, the adjustment range is only around 40 degrees or so. It also features a periscope manometer instead of an ordinary pressure, oh, wait a minute, that is an ordinary pressure gauge. Boy, they lay it on with a trowel, don't they? Oh, and the gauge rotates with the paddle assembly, so you get a little stretching exercise with each pull, which is nice. Some machines, like the Rocket Espresso R91 and La Marzacco Strada EP, use variable pump speed for direct pressure profiling. That's both flexible and repeatable. I'd say it's nearly ideal. All right, that's all for today's installment of the new Espresso series. Up next, we'll take a very close look at premium portafilter baskets and shower screens. And I've been using the Eureka Mignon Libra regularly, and so far I'm liking it a lot. I'm not ready to do a full review yet, but that will be coming up reasonably soon, so keep in touch. Cheers! <laughs>